Okay, welcome to lesson three, graph cubic functions with a calculator. In our last lesson, you graphed them by hand, which is much more difficult than graphing with a calculator. But I'm gonna go through how to graph them with a calculator, and then more importantly, how to find the y-intercepts, as well as key points like the local mins, local maxes, and other words, turning points. And then we're gonna practice writing zeros as factors, because we are gonna be using factors as we move on in polynomials all right, so let's look at our first example. I have created these graphs in Desmos Calculator, and the website is provided for you on your assignment. But basically, by putting in this equation, y equals x cubed minus x, this is the graph I got. Now, bear in mind, when you go to Desmos, you're going to want to adjust the window. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, here we are in Desmos.com and you can see forward slash calculator. You can also get there from just going to desmos.com. But I'm going to type in my equation, so I don't need to type the y equals, but you can if you like. But I'm gonna type x with an up arrow, so a shift upper caret will give me that up area, cubed, I arrow to the right, minus x is our equation. If you'll notice now, here's my graph, and it's all scrunched in there, so it's hard to see. Well, if you've noticed, we've got an extra room on the right and we've got extra room on the left. So one thing I can do is I can hit this zoom out, zoom in. It's just not very precise. So if I go to this window settings, this wrench right here, and I click on that, I can adjust my X minimum and my X maximum here. So I would probably make my X mi uh, minimum be maybe negative three, and you can see it adjusted right away. I'm gonna tab over here and make this be a positive three. And notice now how much more spread out these curves are. It's easier to see where things are. So I would do the same thing with my y-axis. I could adjust my minimum somewhere down here around maybe negative 3. And then I can adjust my y-maximum at positive 3. And then I can just click back on the wrench. And now my picture is a little bit clearer. So now that I have my graph, it's easy for me to click on things to see where stuff is. For example, here's my x and one of my x and y intercepts. If I click on it, it makes the point, and if I highlight over it, you can see that it says zero, zero. If I actually click again, it puts that point on the graph. I can come over here to my negative one, and I can put that on the graph. I can come over here to my positive one, click, and I can put that on the graph. You can also see that when I clicked on my line, it gave me points for my, it's called a local maximum, because sometimes you can have more than one maximum, so we just call it a local maximum, and then for my local minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and click on those, and that puts those points on my graph. Okay, so if we go back over, here's what I have, okay, recorded. So now you know what our local max is. It's basically a turning point. It's the turning point that's the maximum, or one of the maximums, but in this case it's the only maximum. So I'm going to go ahead and write in that turning point. So my local maximum is, and you can round, so my local maximum is negative point, and I'm going to go ahead and round to the hundredths place. So 0.58 comma 0.39 that's my local max. And again, sometimes if you have a, this is a cubic, but if you had a quartic, you might have two of these. Okay, so my local min on this one is going to be 0.58 comma negative 0.39. Interesting the symmetry. These are the same really, right? Except for one's positive, one's negative. So my zeros, zeros remember are just my x-intercepts. And sometimes we also call these the roots of the equation. So I have three of these. So it's important that I write them as coordinate points. So we have negative one, zero. I have zero, zero. And I also have one, zero. As far as y-intercepts, it only intersects the y-axis once, and that's at zero, zero. So this last part is a little bit new for you. What I want to do is I want to write my zeros as factors. Remember that factors are always x plus or x minus something. 
And remember that it's always the opposite. So if I have a zero of negative one, the factor is gonna be x plus one for that. Then for my second one, I have zero. So in that case, I could just write x, or you could write it as x plus zero, which is the same thing as x. And for my final factor of positive one, I would wanna write that as x minus one. So always take the opposite. These zeros are always expressed in parentheses with the x, but on with the opposite sign. Okay, and that's our first example. Now I want to show you just one more, just to make sure you have the hang of it. So in the second graph, I've put this function into Desmos, and I have grabbed this graph. I have done a screenshot, and I have pasted it in here. And you guys can take a screenshot with your snipping tool, and you can paste it into a Word document with these coordinates highlighted and then you will just identify what coordinates are what. So for my local max that's up here and again I have 1.88 I'm rounding to the hundredths place. You can round to the tenths or the hundredths. I don't mind whichever one you want. So there's my local max. My local min is going to be down here at this turning point. So that's going to be negative 0.88 comma, negative 11.11. .11. And then my zeros, again, I have three, which is what I would expect most of the time because this is a cubic. So I should always have three roots. If you remember from last time, though, sometimes our root is duplicated, and if the graph touches the x-axis and then goes back up, we know that we have the same root twice. So just be careful of that. So in this case, our three zeros are negative one point. 9.2, and then we have a 0.54, and finally we have a 2.88, and again I've just rounded to the hundredths place. And then my y-intercept, so now I look at my y-axis and I have my y-intercept down here at 0, negative 6, just one y-intercept. So let's go ahead and write our factors. So our factors are going to be x, and then the opposite sign of these, remember, so it's plus 1.92 times x. In this case, it would be minus 0.54. And then in the final case, it's going to be x minus 2.88. So in concluding, one of the reasons that we are writing the zeros or x-intercepts as factors is because if you'll notice, if I were to take all three of these factors and distribute, so I would do two at a time. Once I distributed these two, I would take what I had and distribute it with the third one. And if I were to do that, potentially I could still have the same equation up here. The only thing I'm missing is if there was some kind of a growth factor here, like a slope is how you might know it. And remember that if I were to pick any point on this graph, so maybe I were to go to one, which is about right there, and go up here to 5, so this point right here is 1, 5, I could put an a value in front here, and I could set this equal to y, and I could fill in 1 for all my x's, I could fill in 5 for my y, and if I were to do that, I could solve for a. So. I've erased it just so I can write it a little bit better. So I could write y equals a, and then list all my factors down here, like this, and dot, 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 all of them. And I could solve, I could plug in, like I said, the one for x and the five for y, so all the x's would have a value of one. I could simplify each of these parentheses, and then divide by all that, and I could figure out a, I could solve for a, and I would probably get two, negative two based on the fact that this is negative two in the front. So that's how our factors can help us. They can actually help us build an equation if we did not already have an equation. And that concludes our lesson on graphing cubic functions with a calculator. So your objectives in the next lesson, and hopefully you should be able to do this now, is to be able to type in an equation into the Desmos calculator online, to be able to identify where the local max and the local min are located, as well as the zeros or x-intercepts and the y-intercept.
and then fill out each of these. 